What's going on everybody? It's your guy Realistic and I'm doing another tutorial for SoundOracle.net and in this video I'm going to show you a couple tricks for dynamic EQ when it comes to mastering. But first before we get into that if you're not already be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page that way you can stay up to date with our latest videos and tutorials and get tips and tricks directly in your mobile feed. Also, Oracle and I have two online mixing courses, The Art of Vocal Mixing and The Art of Beat Mixing. Both of them are filled with hours worth of content and tons and tons of videos to show you how to mix and master professionally. So I'll put the link to both in the description below. So let's get into using a dynamic EQ on mastering. Little disclaimer here, I'm just gonna be talking about dynamic EQ for mastering in here. So I'm not gonna be going over limiters, outboard gear, mid side compression, bus compression, all that. I got tons of videos on that stuff. So I'll have some stuff pop up right there for you to be able to click on that if you want, or at the end of the video, you'll see it in the little video cards that pop up if you wanna check out that. Right here, we're just talking about using a dynamic EQ on mastering. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to find, because we're, you know, we're dealing with mastering and dynamic EQ, what we're kind of doing is we're trying to lower some things that have too much of a bump or too much of a buildup. So I like to find a section of the song that has more stuff going on to it. So like you can see when we look at this wave file here, right? The beginning here, there's not really much going on. We could probably assume right here that there's not any drums or anything going on or any bass we want to go with more like one of these bigger sections right here where we can clearly tell that there's more stuff going on because we're working on mastering and we're working on some certain buildups and we want to find that that kind of area where a lot of stuff is going on so let's go ahead and highlight that and then we'll just put it on a loop and we'll start going so i'll kind of show you what i'm talking about here like a tiny there's a lot of questions we should find the answers i have a fantasy of making love and so we can hear lots going on there compared to right not a lot of action so we'll definitely have more success if we hang out over here so the eq that i normally use is i use pro q3 for the dynamic eq i actually use two ones for mastering but pro q2 is probably the one that a lot of people have this or neutron as far as when it comes to dynamic capabilities but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm actually going to pull up the other one that I use in my mastering chain. I actually use both of these. But the reason why is because there's some attack and release uh, parameters on here. So I also kind of want to show you that. But just know that you can dial this into, you know, any dynamic EQ, uh, with the exception, of course, if you're using Pro Q3, uh, there won't be an attack and release. It's It does it automatically for you. But for the sake of this, I want to show you some attack and release stuff. So basically what I, I try to do here is, you know, I don't want to do too many tweaks and stuff. I'm hoping a lot of that was corrected in mixing. So what I like to do is just, you know, a couple bands, you know, anywhere from three to six bands here and there. And just a lot of times I'm doing some narrow cues, you know, just kind of, you know, getting some little bumps and stuff out there. And I'm not trying to reduce by any more than one and a half db 2 db if it really needs some work and a lot of times i'm even hanging out in like half a db somewhere around there because i'm just kind of doing light stuff so the first thing that i kind of look for is i, I kind of listen and analyze of what could be better so let's give this a little listen Okay, so I'm just hearing right there, there's little things that we can clean up in the low end and just a little bit in that upper mid range. And uh, maybe we can calm the reverb down a little bit too. And so what I like to do here with the uh, dynamic EQ is I like to do a combination of stereo, side, and mid. And that way I can control the mids, I can control the, the sides and you know just the whole stereo field. If you wanna know more about mid side uh, EQing, I do have a video on that which i'll put up right up there for you to be able to click on if you want to watch that but uh yeah basically what i like to do is a lot of the lower end stuff i like to keep in uh the mid 
because, uh, you know, your kick and base, that's usually going to be coming down the center. It's it's not too often that you're going to pan your kick or your, your base. I'm, I'm sure there's exceptions. But, uh, yeah, I like to do that. And then a lot of times for the upper mid-range, I like to just keep that, you know, stereo so we're getting mid and side because there's a lot of information that's coming down for, for both right there. And then what I'm doing right here with this side is I'm actually going to work on the reverbs a little bit. And a lot of times the, the stuff I want to wash out of the uh, – reverb is going to be on this side. So let's go ahead and check out what I'm listening for here. One of the things that I noticed with the kick, there's just a little bit of a resonating frequency in the kick drum, you know, about 105, somewhere around there. That could probably be tucked down a little bit. It just gets a, a little too much of an overtone. So I probably want to duck that out a little bit. So we'll start there. Uh, one of the things I like to do when it comes to mastering is I like to use this little headphone thing right here to zero out the frequency so I can really hear what's, uh, what's really resonating. It really lets me hone in on that. Okay, so it was actually 108, I was 3 hertz off, but uh, we kind of heard a little bump right there, especially when that bass came in, so let me actually kind of highlight that in uh, the mix here to have the bass come in. So now that we found that, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to lower down this right here by, you know, almost a dB. Again, we don't want to be too much with this here, we just want to be, you know fairly subtle with this. Uh, so then the, the next thing that I'm going to do here is we're going to work on this threshold. I don't want it to be too compressed, so I want to kind of keep the threshold light to where I'm just kind of, you know, getting about a dB of gain reduction. Baby, hold me closer like a tiny dancer. There's a lot of questions we should find the answers. I have a fantasy of making love and vent. So you can see right there what I had with that threshold. It was, it was pretty light. It wasn't too crazy. You know, you don't want to do anything like this. Baby, hold me closer like a tiny dance. So, because then it just compresses the whole time down. What I want to do is I want to keep this lighter to where it's just kind of compressing when it resonates too much, when the buildup is going too a little too much. Baby, hold me closer like a tiny dancer. There's a lot of questions we should find the answers. I have a fantasy of making. And you can even see right there that as it's going, it's really only compressing down when the kick drum is coming in. It's not really compressing down when uh, the kick drum isn't going off. So that way we can still retain some other information in there. All right, so then the other thing is what am I gonna do with these, uh, this attack and release? Well, what's really unique about dynamic EQ is a lot of times when it comes to mastering uh, with compressors, we generally want to use a slow attack time and a medium or slow release time because we don't want to damage the transients. However, when it comes to dynamic EQ, it's a little bit different usually. Uh, you usually want to go with a faster attack time because we're just working on a... Uh, resonating frequency or some harshness. So we kind of want to get in and get out really quick, right? Uh, at least that's what I was taught from my mastering teacher. Uh, I had uh, studied under Greg from Rare Form Mastering for uh, a while, and that's what he taught me. And when he explained it, it's like it made sense because we're not compressing the whole signal. We're just compressing a really narrow area that's resonating too much. So we want to get in and we want to get out of there really quick. Uh, and so that's what he taught me, you know, and he's also, you know, he's mastered a bunch of stuff for Prince. He also did stuff for people like Miles Davis, Bill Withers, Muddy Waters, Laser Break. So to me, he just has a little bit more credibility than the guy later down the road and that's going to be in the comment sections of this video bashing me. He's got a little bit more credibility than that, right? So I trusted his word for it. Uh, if there is otherwise... You know, maybe there is, but it's worked for him in the records he's worked on, and it's worked for me for the records that I've worked on, and it does make a lot of sense. But if you were going to do, like, some bus compression, yeah, you definitely want to do the slow attack time. But for this case, we're going to do a faster attack, and we're going to do a faster release. Baby, hold me closer like a tiny dancer. There's a lot of questions we should find the answers. I have a fantasy of making love in Venice. When I pick, baby, hold me closer like a tiny dancer. 
And then as far as the numbers right there, just kind of, you know, really use your ears, dial in, make sure it doesn't sound too compressed or it's not doing any pumping or anything. It usually shouldn't because you're dealing with such a narrow band, but just kind of use your ears. You can see I'm not quite going the fastest of the attack and release. Okay, so now I'm going to move on. I think there was some stuff going on in this 200 area, so we'll just kind of search around for that. Yeah, so there's just a little boost right there, a little bump right there that I just kind of want to tame and duck down. So we'll go ahead and bring that down here. Again, I don't want to go too crazy, so I'll probably keep that just a little bit under a dB here. Baby, hold me closer like a tiny dam. And for this one, I might do a little bit wider of a cue here. Again, these are things where you really got to use your ears. I did uh, a pretty narrow uh, cue for the low end here because there was just one area I want to attack. As I was listening to this next area here at the 342, I started to hear like, ah, there's a little bit wider of an area that might need to be compressed down. So that's all I'm doing there. So you just want to trust your ears there. So you hear what I'm doing there versus the, the narrow. Okay, and then same thing here. We'll uh, lower the uh, threshold a little bit more just so I'm not like, you know, compressing too much here. I just want to kind of just tame down those peaks. And you can see, too, it's just kind of pushing down when he gets a little too much there. And then we'll just adjust these attack and release. Baby, hold me closer like a tiny dancer. There's a lot of questions we should find the answers. I have a fantasy of making love in Venice. When Okay, and then too, I felt like the, some of the reverb was a, a little, uh, it could be tamed a little bit. And so for that, I like to, to kind of focus on the sides a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see I got a little bit wider of a cue already set in place just because the reverb is going to take up a little bit more space. So just a little bit right there. The reverb wasn't too much on there, and it's not going in all different directions, but there is some things I'm hearing with the background vocals. There's also things that I'm hearing with some of the instruments in the background that could be tamed down a little bit. So again, we'll just be kind of subtle with this. Baby, hold me closer like a tiny dancer. There's a lot of questions we should find the answers. I have a fantasy of making love in Venice. When I pick... And then the last thing I notice is there's just a, a little, I don't want to say harshness because the vocal isn't too harsh, but there's just a little area that I can tame up top here of the, the vocal here. Um, but uh, what I'm going to do here, you could, if you were just focusing on the vocal, you could do mid because usually the lead vocal is coming down the center. But at the same time, I think some of the hi-hats are kind of in that same area. So I'm just going to keep this going uh, stereo. So I'm working on the mid and the sides at the same time. And basically what I was hearing there is just a little like uh, wispiness, probably just made up a word, but you get what I'm saying. There was kind of like a wispy sound that I just kind of wanted to duck out. And that's what's so perfect about these dynamic EQs is, you know, I'm just less than a dB. I got a fairly narrow Q. I'm getting in and I'm getting out of there pretty quickly. So I'm not doing anything too noticeable. Just kind of, you know, adding a little bit more of a more balanced and a little bit even and out more of a sound there. So that's all I'm really doing. So let's check this out. Baby, hold me closer like a tiny dancer. There's a lot of questions we should find the answers. I have a fantasy of making love in Venice. When I pick, baby, hold me closer like a tiny dancer. There's a lot of questions we should Okay, and then the last thing here that I may do now that I'm kind of here in the mix in the full context is just a little bit of this uh, low end down here in the sub frequencies. I don't want to do too much because I still want to keep that punch, but I think that we could tame that a little bit. That way we can get a little bit more out of our limiter when we add that later. It will allow us to push it a little bit more. Baby, homie. 
And I think for this too, I like to do a little bit wider of a cue when it usually comes to the low end, um, just so it, it's not so like, you know, just narrow and it can sometimes be a little bit more smoother if uh, you get a little bit wider of a cue down in that low end too, especially when we think about uh, low end frequencies, they're usually wider waveforms versus little, you know, short ones that we hear in the higher. Okay, yeah, I feel like 43 around there is pretty good for this one. And you can see I'm kind of, you know, I'm under a dB still. Um, you know, I usually don't go too over that. If I do, it's it's at like a dB and a half. Uh, and then for this, I definitely want to turn down the threshold because it, it looked to be a little too much. And for the sake of the low end, what I might do is I might not go as fast with the attack. I don't want it to be so apparent. And same with the release. I'm not going to go as fast with the release either. I'm not going super slow and I'm not even really in the medium mark. But as you can see from other bands over here, I was going a little bit faster with those. So over in this, just really this sub frequency, I'm going to just kind of try to be a little bit more subtle with it just because I don't want to push down too fast and I don't want the release to come up too much because I, I don't want to risk pumping it, especially since I am dealing with a wider cue. Baby, homie, closer like a tiny dancer. There's a lot of questions we should find the answers. I have a fantasy of making love in Venice. Okay, and then I'll bypass this. Baby, homie, closer like a tiny dancer. There's a lot of questions we should find the answers. I have a fantasy of making love in Venice. When I pick Baby, homie, closer like a tiny dancer. There's a lot of questions we should find the answers. I have a fantasy of making love in Venice. Okay, I know it's subtle, but if you were really, you know, listening to it, uh, it's so cool, right? Because we didn't boost anything. We just cut a bunch of stuff. And by doing this, the, the record actually sounds clear and brighter, even though we didn't boost or enhance any frequencies. We just took some stuff out. And I mean, too, I mean, we we didn't do anything by more than a dB. So it's it's pretty cool to be able to uh, accomplish that with such subtleness and just stuff that gets in and out so fast and without having to boost. So now with that in mind, really listen for it. Uh, listen to how it sounds without it. And then when I bring it in, pay attention to how things, the clarity improves and how things seem to be brighter. Baby, homie, closer like a tiny dancer. There's a lot of questions we should find the answers. I have a fantasy of making love in Venice. When I pick baby, homie, closer like a tiny dancer. There's a lot of questions we should find. Yeah, it's it's awesome, man. That's what I love about dynamic EQs and really just kind of being subtle with it is uh, and and also mid side EQ. Both of those together is just such a deadly combination where we can do little subtle things like that and enhance the record. And you see, we didn't do surgery. You know, we didn't have to do much. The mix was already pretty solid. We're just kind of doing things to sweeten it up a little bit and kind of just add things it's really just a second set of ears when it comes to that or just a, a little bit different focus of using a different part of our brain and just one final thing to note when it comes to your dynamic eq on your master channel and it's really important is your channel is probably not going to look like how i have it on here you know you may not have to do 108 you may have to do 120 hertz or 130 or maybe it is 108 maybe it's 105 maybe it's 96 my point is is every song is going to be different. So just because this is what I did on this particular track doesn't mean these are going to be the exact same settings. You may not need to do anything at all in the upper mid range like I had to do here. Or you may have to do something up here to kind of reduce some of the sibilance or something. Maybe there's a lot of, you know, a lot of S's and T's that are really cutting through in the 7K range and you may have to duck that out. Maybe the reverb has a really good balance and you don't have to do anything on the sides. Or maybe be the low end there isn't any low end so you don't have to do that my point is is this was just more to let you know really how you should use your attack and release how you should set your threshold and your cues and really the big thing that i want to show you is take a second listen to the track 
hear what the problem is, and then from there, all you want to do then is make the adjustments based on what you're hearing, not what you're seeing in this particular tutorial that I did on this particular song. But yeah, hopefully this information helps. Like I said, if you want to know more about mid-side EQ for mastering or limiters or using exciters on there, uh, I have a full playlist on mastering, which you'll see at the end of the video for suggested videos. Uh, just check out that playlist if you want to know more about mastering. Like I said before, if you're not already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page. That way you can stay up to date with our latest videos and tutorials. And you'll also get those tips and tricks that drop directly into your mobile feed. And Oracle and I do have those two online mixing courses, the art of beat mixing and the art of vocal mixing. I do have the links in the description below. And also, if you found this video helpful, hit that like button. I know it sounds crazy, but believe it or not, hitting that like button really does go a long way to help this channel grow it does impact the algorithm so if you could do that and you found it helpful it would really help the channel and what we do for the community hey thanks for watching be sure to subscribe to our channel right here so you can catch the latest tutorials on mixing mastering and production and you can check out some of our suggested videos here here and here and of course if you're looking for premium loops and samples you can find that at soundoracle.net we got plenty to choose from